evening, everybody. My name is uh, Felix Reinhardt, and I will give you, in this last talk this afternoon, um, I will give you the story about the Stealth Key. Urban Alps is a startup from Switzerland, and uh, we thought uh, we give the, to the security industry a new, a new little kick. Two things I would like to give you at the beginning of this presentation. The Stealth Key is unscannable, and we believe the Stealth Key is one of the first really custom AM mass production part, which is going to change the industry. So, um, two years ago, or maybe last year, you were here before, and you have seen, uh, for example, one of this uh, really nice watch, uh, or a ring, and you think it's really great because it's made out of gold, and you have acquired that one. Um, of course, you have it at home, um, and you have it kept safe. Now, as the, time, as the day is falling, um, this is normally, statistically, this is a time when people like this guy go into your house and think, okay, you have really nice things at home. We would like to get that from you. Um, normally, what they have to do, they have to get into the house. And you, know all, you all know the situation. When you get back home, you know there is something broken. You immediately know it. So, what normally is happening that these people that go into your house, they leave a trace. They have to pick the lock, they have to uh, break the door, they have to break the window, but something it has been done. You can see it. But that's obviously not a good story, but there is worse to come. 3D printing, and we have heard the story. Uh, two years ago, students at MIT have printed uh, Schlage Primus, they took one picture, they took a little bit of software, and they ordered a couple of keys online. All of a sudden, you can print your keys online, or you, maybe you can even print them at home. So is 3D printing a threat? Obviously, we had to test that ourselves. So with um, a sm uh, small, very cheap uh, 3D printer, we said, OK, we would like to print now one of the highest uh, mechanical security keys that uh, we found. Um, this key set uh, cost uh, 250 euros and uh, is one of the best uh, system available. So is 3D printing the threat? We believe no, it should not be the threat. Because as you all know, you have uh, watched uh, movies, uh, James Bond, MacGyver, they take the key, put it into the clay, and they have an immediate uh, um, mold in order to get now uh, afterwards their, their duplicate. So pr duplicating a key, if you really wanted to do it, if you really wanted to do it, was always possible. But you had to be MacGyver or James Bond to do it. So it's not easy, um, but so therefore 3D printing is not the threat. But we all know that before you can actually print, you have to have the file. And this is the problem. So easy 3D scanning, that's the problem. And copying for the masses is already possible. Um, Startups in Europe and in the States, for example, in this case, uh, Kimi, uh, they have an app and you can take a picture. Um, the intentions are obviously really good. You lost your key, or, or if ever you lose your key, before that, actually, you have to take a picture of your, your key. Uh, it's saved somewhere. And if you then lost your key or you got locked out of your house, you go to the you go to 7-Eleven and uh, really quickly uh, 3D print your key or mill it, and then you have the, the duplicate. So it's actually a good thing. Uh, but obviously, what you can also do is uh, you can take a picture of somebody else's key, for example, of your key. I can take a picture of your key, and then uh, whenever you are at TCT, I will go and just uh, go into your house. So Wired Magazine said, this is finally the app that um, you can use to break into your neighbor's house. Or, um, and this is a bit more um, difficult, I think, this turns, and as uh, LA, uh, LA Times, Times says, this turns the ordinary person into a crim criminal because it's that easy. It's that easy. This duplication is only possible because of the rapid revolution, uh, evolution of 3D scanners. We know. Um, 
Before we had really big uh, 3D scanners, okay, they were very, very accurate, um, mounted on robots. Uh, I have worked on uh, these uh, quite a bit. Uh, we have shrunk them now into handheld devices. You can uh, scan anything you would like to. Um, there's add-ons on tablets. Even only a couple of pictures, you can take 3D, uh, 3D objects. And we also know that very soon, probably in a year, maybe, maybe two, smartphones will have actual 3D scanners installed. So this is certainly the threat. Now, there's a couple of questions that arise. Um, if you have a duplicate of, uh, if I have a duplicate of your key and I go into your house, um, I don't leave a trace anymore. So does the insurance then pay? Or, yeah, the issue is not solved. Um, other problems arise. Uh, for example, you have an ex-girlfriend. Did she take a picture of your key? Huh? Uh, that's our ex-tenants, uh, ex-cleaning personnel. You just don't know it. You cannot prove it anymore. Uh, lockers at train stations here at Birmingham Airport. Who left their luggage into, in, in a locker? I don't know. Um, it's not safe anymore. So this proof of concept has certainly gone. And uh, four weeks ago, we, uh, the, uh, Jim, I think, uh, mentioned that there, there, it, it is actually happening. The story behind this uh, slide is travel locks are used, they are uh, worldwide by travelers, so that if you want to um, lock up your luggage while traveling to the States, uh, you can do so, but customs, they can open your luggage in order to inspect it. So millions of locks, um, can be opened by customs, and there is only seven keys to these millions of locks. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Washington Post um, posted this picture of these seven keys, and somebody made then uh, 3D, uh, uh, seven 3D uh, step files, and everybody can now print these keys, so everybody can open these millions of locks. So it's actually happening. At Urban Alps, we said, OK, this is not good, no, not good. Uh, we have to do something against that. And why don't we use the 3D printing technology for its good? So we know we can produce with the layer by layer um, uh, process, we can print things that are inside each other. For example, in this ball, uh, you can see there's things inside, in, inside the ball again, and why don't we use that in order to make a better key? And this is what we did. The stealth key is basically like a normal key, partially. You can see um, the security features are placed outside, like on your key. This is scannable. Um, there's dimples, there's maybe dents, uh, all sorts of things. But the stealth key on the inside has also a code, and this code cannot be seen. Therefore, it cannot be, it cannot be scanned. We don't say it's impossible to duplicate because uh, you can always x-ray stuff, and, uh, but then it's going to take a little bit more, uh, uh, more, more, more money and more motivation to actually duplicate that. Um, I would not be standing here if we would not have very, very strong IPR on this process and on this technology. Um, we have several patents for the key and for the lock, uh, which are extremely horizontal. That means that basically everything you want to do now with 3D printing and uh, mechanical high security is patented by us. We have tested. Um, or many, uh, many lawyers have actually tested these patents and they're really bulletproof. So that's the, that's the benefit for everybody. So very soon uh, these keys will be available on the market. Um, that's, that's one story. But on the, uh, what I think uh, we should also look at is that this product is actually a super example of mass custom additive manufacturing production. because. I don't want that my key looks exactly the same like your key. So every key is the same but different. So same, same, but different. And additive manufacturing can do that because complexity is for, is for free. That's the story about the stealth key. Obviously, this comes at the cost. 
current, uh, this is an image of um, a batch that we produced uh, um, in my machine in uh, Switzerland. Currently, the cost is uh, two euros per key. It's, it's an OK number for high security keys. Um, it will have to go down. We can batch produce 1,000 key in less than 24 hours. Additive manufacturing, good for us, good for everybody, will evolve. And the question is, how far will it evolve? In order to do that, we compared additive manufacturing, which is actually a 3D printing technology, but it's also a welding technology. We compared this technology to conventional 2D printing and um, can welding. And we created a synthetic evolution index, which is based on 50% of speed, 20% uh, on machine cost, and 30% uh, on quality. And what you can see on the left uh, slide is that over the 20 years of uh, the evolution of these two technologies, speed increased by 20, cost decreased by 60, and quality went uh, up 16 times. So now if we take um, this slide and transpose it to additive manufacturing, we can see that, okay, we're about uh, 10 years down the road. Therefore, we should be approximately at 30% of the evolution of this technology until we reach the physical limit of additive manufacturing. And there are limits. So there's lots and lots of room for improvement. And we're happy for that because then we can produce more keys. Obviously, we also want to be part of improving this technology. And what we have looked at is uh, the uh, improved surface roughness. For example, when we print our keys at my facility, they come out of the SLM machine and they have a surface roughness of 6.6 .6 micrometers. That's relatively good, um, but we want to have it better. Uh, sand blasted, they go down to 4.4, and um, if we plasma polish them, they go into the range of 2 micrometers, which is starting to be acceptable for keys. The good thing about plasma pol polishing is that it's a batch process, it's a fast process, and therefore it's a cheap process. Second, it allows external polishing and also internal polishing, which, in the, which for the stealth key is obviously very important. Currently, we are working on the third set of our uh, working prototypes. You can see the first generation was a little bit of this uh, presentation model. Uh, the second uh, generation did already work, but uh, was a clumsy model of a key. And the third generation now is actually a key that you can really use. I have it here. Um, and this key now is also suitable for master keying. So you can use this technology to install locks in entire buildings where you permutate um, the different keys and the locks to each other. So that your key uh, is going into the lock and mine not, but with, for example, at the house door, we both can enter. There are other benefits of the self key, for example, and we heard it before, um, 10 times less uh, material, which is wasted in production which is going to be important in the future, certainly. Then factory space is uh, reduced and also allows for a completely new distribution model of these uh, keys. Then mass customization is possible. We heard it, obviously, for the coding. But not only the coding is possible. I mean, on the, on the other end of the key, you could theoretically have an individ individual symbol or for example if you would, would like to have the, the the face of your dog printed there you can have that so the there this mass customization is going to be possible um, manufacturing of old keys is also possible so if you would like to have a copy of your key we can easily do it obviously because it has the security features outside what is really difficult in these uh, in the key industry is that which key goes where and uh, the most difficult part is uh, at production. 
So every keys look this, uh, all keys look the same uh, when, they are being, when they are currently being produced at the current manufacturers. And it, with additive manufacturing, we can directly build the, the, the keys with the, um, with the labeling installed on it, because complexity is for free. So I would like to finish with a couple of uh, mass customization possibilities on the other end of the key, which is the boat, which is the rope, or which is obviously, because we're from Switzerland, is the Swiss cross. And I would like to repeat the two things that are most importantly for this stealth key, which is it's going to save the mechanical key, in, uh, key uh, industry, which, because it is unscannable. And for all of, us, uh, all of us here in the additive manufacturing community, it is one example of a product that is ideally suited for mass additive manufacturing production. Thank you very much.